Guys, we have a very special tutorial today because we're out on the field, we're going to be making something live right now. This video is inspired by a recent live feedback session I had within my academy. Put these two shots together, boom, you've instantly got a sequence where you have much more creative control, um, much more creative output than just having a pan from one thing to the other. And something that was happening a lot is that people, the, the newbies in the academy, are using shots that pan. They're using shots that they will point to something, they'll press record, they'll kind of shoot, and if there's something more interesting there, they'll kind of pan between it, maybe even pan back, and that's their shot. And this is a beginner's mistake, and I really want to help you guys avoid that. And not only just avoid it, but I want to explain and explicitly show you what to do instead. So literally, right now I'm going to make a video that would be in the style of a beginner. And then I'm gonna show you how to take that beginner video, remake it and turn it into something that looks completely pro. Let's get right into it. First off is the beginner's style. So we maybe look at this behind me and we would see some stuff that you wanna see. You know, the sun's already set, but we've got this nice kind of light that's happening right now. So if you were somebody who didn't know too much about filmmaking, you would basically point at the thing and maybe you'd go here and to there. And that's what you would do. Maybe, that, maybe that's the first shot that you get. Second shot is that you like to look at these palm trees. So maybe you'd point up like this and you would film the palm trees, something like that. And over there, we've also got the beach and the sea. We'd maybe from here, we might zoom in a bit and we would kind of do a panning shot, maybe from this side all the way to this side. And what the classic thing is to do is put those three shots together in an edit, roughly cut them to the beat of the music, and you would basically come out with something that just looks a bit standard. So how can we take this scene and turn it into something that is captivating, imaginative, artistic, cinematic, uh, that really will captivate your audience's attention straight away. The first thing we've got to do is we've got to think about how to break up these pans into individual shots. So what you've got to think is the first pan I did was back there, panning from this kind of statue thing over to the sunset over there. So instead of doing that, first we film the statue. So let's go over there and we're going to pick out, we're going to try and get the best shot of the statue that we can in this moment right now. So if we come over here, Let's say we get a, a wide shot of the statue right here from nice and down low. Gonna make sure this is all crisp and in focus. And then instead of just pointing and shooting and just leaving it still or kind of waving it around, we're gonna add in a little bit of movement. We're gonna go left to right in a kind of a tracking style. So no gimbal or anything, just trying to do this handheld. And we're gonna go nice and low to the ground. We're gonna film something that goes left to right like this that kind of establishes the statue there. We're gonna do another one from a bit further away, <clears throat> just to get the whole thing in there. So we're gonna go <clears throat> left to right, just like that. Awesome. Okay, so now we've got a more interesting shot of the statue. We did some cinematic movement. We weren't just moving the camera itself, we were moving our whole body with the camera. And also, what we did is in the background, we kind of saw some of this sunset which is going to help us to link to the next shot. So if we go over here right now, what we can do is link to the other shot that we just took and film maybe the sunset from inside the kind of statue. So if you come a bit closer, you can see that maybe we can do something from within the kind of, we're like framing it up from within the statue. So maybe we're coming again, left to right, matching the movement of the last shot. And we're just going to reveal this beautiful sunset here with the palm trees and that can be our shot. So what we've done is instead of have one pan that says wide shot the statue panning over to the sunset there you go what we've done is we had we tried to get the best shot we could with intention with intentional movement with intentional framing and then what we did is we linked that shot through having the statue in the foreground to the next shot which was the sunset. That creates a link in the viewer's mind. They know that the statue is near or 
roughly where it is in comparison to the sunset, and you do that creatively rather than just by doing it the most obvious way you can think of, which would be panning. We could do one more shot here if we maybe wanted to link again. Maybe we zoom in as much as we can. So we're gonna film that with the palm trees there. We've got some people cycling by. That looks pretty nice. Cool. So now I've got three shots there rather than that pan. The next thing that we could do is go over to the sea here. So instead of being too far away from the sea and just getting one big long pan like we did before, we're gonna go a bit closer so we haven't got all this clutter in the foreground. One of the key things you always need to think about in the framing of your shots is that do I want all of this random stuff in my shot? You have to choose what you get in your shot and what you get out of your shot. So right here, I could get a shot of the sea, but there's so much of this land in the foreground. The sea looks tiny in the background. And then you've got this kind of shack here that I don't necessarily want in there. So let's go much closer. Whilst I'm at it, there's a lot of seagulls flying past here, so we'll try and get a good shot of them. Almost got hit by a runner. So the sky's turning a really nice colour now, so we have to be pretty quick. We're way closer to the sea. I'm going to try and get a, a slow motion shot here. And notice how low I'm going. Low, notice how low the angle is right now. I'm not pointing down at the sea. I'm trying to get on the sea's level right here. And I'm trying to get a nice wave from the, almost the angle of the sand. It's going to make the sea look way bigger and more impressive, even though it's not, you know, obviously it's not crazy right now. Gonna try and go just a little bit closer. All right, now we've got beautiful W Hotel here. We've already got the shot of the sea, so what we can do is move towards, maybe do a dolly towards the hotel. Dollying forward with the sea going on there. So now we've got a couple of shots of the sea. We've linked the, we've got a nice shot of the actual waves. We've got a shot of the W. You can see these kites over here, so maybe we can get another one there. We're gonna do a bit more left to right movement here. Starting down low, trying to keep the camera steady. You're framing up the two towers there and that kite. And it looks pretty cool. There's the moon. Let's see if we can get the moon in there. Moon is always hard to film, but maybe not. Let's see how that comes out. Also, what we have in front of me right now is a nice path. It's always good to get leading lines in your shot, so a path going towards the nice pink sky there. Nice kind of moving forward, dollying shot. That could work pretty well. Okay, so basically what we've done is we've got, instead of doing those pans, we've taken a lot of individual shots. We've broken down the scene that's been in front of us into the different things that we want the audience to pay attention to. If you want a free list of all the gear that I use on a day-to-day -day basis, go and grab the gear list, that is free. It's in the description below, and that will just enter your email, you get a PDF of the gear list sent to you straight away, as well as tips and tricks about filmmaking sent straight to your inbox. So I will see you there, guys. Keep filming. Till next time, bye-bye.